is that, folks. That is the last car into the field, heading in to the last stage of day one of the Otago Rally. It's been a magnificent day. Eight stages, finishing on the tarmac. David, seven of the finest gravel stages we've had behind us today. It's been a great day one here oh, at the Otago. It's been an incredible day one, Colin. Just so much action. So many, I mean, stages that I didn't really know, but they are now absolute icons, aren't they? No, they are. You know, we go back to rallies year after year. Yep. You asked me to name a stage on some of them, I couldn't tell you. But yeah, I'll, I'll now, never forget Dances Dance Pass. Pass. Yeah. I'll never forget Curry Bush, which is to come tomorrow. Yeah. Listen, you know, we knew at the start of this day, we knew at the start of the rally, it was going to be Hayden Padden's event. But my goodness, David, <laughs> he's been impressive out there. He leads at the end of day one by three minutes. I think two. Two. But, but just, you know, talking to him last night, it was so, it was quite humbling to, to listen to Hayden talking because he knew he was going to be massively ahead, but he still talks about the competition, still talks with massive enthusiasm yeah. about the likes of Harry Pettigrew, Emma Gilmore, yeah. probably because they're customers of his. <laughs> but, you know, that first stage, what did he take? 30 seconds, Just unbelievable. seconds. He is in a different league, but the, what's really lovely is the kind of acceptance. Yeah. You know, I remember back in the day when Colin McRae was British Championship, he was streets ahead in the same sort of fashion. Mm. And there was real, ah, oh, what are we going to do? We need to get rid of this guy. Here, there's an acceptance. They put their arms around him. He's the benchmark. He's what? We were talking to Emma Gilmore tonight. What speed do you need? I need that speed. speed. He's a world-class driver. There's no question about it. Yeah. He's a winner in the World Rally Championship. And you know what? If you're an aspiring Kiwi driver, and there are a few of them here this yeah. weekend, there's no better man to look up to, no and, better man to and learn from. Not, not just in terms of the driving, Cole. You look at everything that he does in terms of car oh. preparation. The, you know, the physical ability, the yeah. mental approach yeah. of the guy. He's got everything. He so, really does. You know, he's, yeah, he's, he's perfect. Finding out a few things today, which will hopefully help us for the fast Scandinavian rallies back in Europe. Um, a few setup things we need to try and work on. That's not quite right, but for sure, it's, it's a pleasure to drive the car. Um, it'd be nice to have more power in on these roads because uh, when they're such amazing roads, you, you want more power and everything all the time. But it is what it is. Um, just enjoying it and trying to learn what we can. You're quite possibly the busiest world-class driver around just now. Uh, this is all yours. All these cars you are responsible for. How would you find the time to do it all? Uh, to be honest, I'm quite proud of it, to be fair. Uh, we've got such a good group of guys. It's all about the people put around you. So we've got 30 plus people here this weekend to run five cars. And our first thing with all our, all our cars is make sure reliability is number one and then work on performance. But um, I can't do it without all these guys. And, uh, you know, during the weekend, my job's not so much. I try and focus on the driving and, and help out where I can. But other than that, uh, the boys did a good job. Yeah, great stuff today from Hayden Padden out there. But his young protege, David, Ari Pettigrew, what a name, oh, what a performance he's and it's put in. all in the name. You know, if you go back, ooh, how many years? There was that one run in New Zealand, I think he was it against Fulvio Bacchelli? Yes, yes, that, him, that rings bells with me. <laughs> it was in like 76, 77, something around that time. Paul, you know. No, Paul wouldn't. Uh, <laughs> it was in the 70s. Ari Vatanen created a legend here yeah. on a, like, I can't remember, a 50k stage or something. He caught and passed pretty much every car. And everybody in New Zealand remembers this stage. And probably that's what created Ari Pettigrew's this Christian name. Well, maybe, maybe. But Ari Pettigrew's dad was a massive fan. Ari, though, second place at the end of day one. He's not been without his problems today. It just never stops when you're at the top, does it? No, no, it's a bit like that at the moment. A few issues in the last two stages today, but um, yeah, she's getting a bit warm. So hopefully we'll retalk the head and hope, hope for the best for tomorrow, really, that the forest stage will be the one that will hurt it if it, any of them do. So fingers crossed. So what was that issue? What was it, how, did it, how did it show itself, the issue you had? Uh, through the um, Danzies Pass, it got hot towards the end, so we crawled out of the end of that one. And um, yeah, obviously pushed a bit of water out, so hopefully we can get it band-aided enough for tomorrow anyway. You're not only a very talented driver, but you're not a bad mechanic either. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it helps with the bills. So <laughs> obviously I do all the work myself on the car over the help of a few others. So yeah, no, it definitely helps with the budget side of things. Before you had that issue today, tell me how it was going. Yeah, it's been an awesome day. I guess we um, never really expected to be where we are. So it's pretty, pretty awesome. And I guess all the hard work and the off seasons paid off. So yeah, can't be happier. So we'll keep our fingers crossed that Ari Pettigrew sorts that problem. By the way, did I say at the start it was the last car? Did I? I may have got that wrong. We have one or two more cars. This is a great little stage, a really famous stage. It runs every year on the Otago Rally. It is a wonderful stage. I tell you what, let's just stay with this goal because WRC organizers around the world can learn from this. We are probably 
500 metres from the centre of Dunedin. Absolutely. All this is, is three corners and in an industrial estate. That's all it is. Lots of room, the and cars the, go wide. They can... the, the, there's no industry around here on a Saturday. No. And there are thousands and thousands of people up there. And I think the thing is, David, you don't have to come over complicate it. No. Keep it simple and enjoy it. No. You'll let the speed and the cars and, entertain and you know, the fans. Every one of these people's paid. 10 bucks or something to is come that out. right? And it's a contribution Fantastic. to the car club. It's uh, brilliant. Paul, just have a look at these guys here on the start line. Japanese crew. I remember them from four years ago. These guys are regulars mm. on the Otago Rally. They bring their little Suzuki across and they have a whole load of fun out there. Not the fastest car, but my goodness me, they're committed. David, we've talked about our top two drivers. Third place is... Ben Hunt. Ben Doing Hunt. a good job. Great job, and you know, really nice to see somebody getting hold of one of these, a Skoda, you know, really driving it tremendously well, and right in the fight, in the fight, okay, quite a distance from Pettigrew, Pettigrew's got some problems, yeah. you don't know, but you'd have to say Ben Hunt definitely, mm -hmm. he's looking good for a podium tomorrow. Well, we'll watch that with interest. Now in fourth place, a name you'll be familiar with, it's Emma Gilmore, her first event in the Citroen Rally 2 car, let's hear from Emma. Yeah, it was an amazing day. I mean, fantastic stages, just so much fun to be driving. So it was awesome. Um, the car's amazing. Just a case of me getting more confidence in it and learning it and, yeah, just keep building on that. So some bits are really great and other bits still need work. But uh, last couple of stages, we had a steering wheel coming loose. So, uh, yeah, that was a bit tense, let's just say, getting through the last two stages. How did you deal with that? Very straight arm on that side, make sure the bolt stayed in. <laughs> <laughs> and it's why we had a half spin on um, on the second last stage. Tell me about you know the intricacies of this beast. Uh, it's just so positive. It, it, it turns in. It has so much grip. And I've probably picked up a few bad habits with how I've been driving with other vehicles. So it's a case of you know relearning a little bit and uh, and just really leaning on the car. Like you know the more you push it, the more it works. And it's just having that confidence and belief that the car's going to work. So David, really good to see Emma in the Citroen. Really good to see a Citroen yeah. here in New Zealand. She's done a good job out there. That little issue at the end of the day was scary with the steering it wheel. It was. But I, we should have asked her, did she not remember Peter Solberg? <laughs> remember when he had the steering wheel come loose? Box eight, me, box eight in Greece he with Phil Mills. Mills. to get the, the spanner out and he did it in the middle of the stage. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, it is obviously a terrifying issue to, to have the wheel come loose. It's one of those things. She drove around it. Yeah. Uh, great, you know, she only did 100k of testing before. This is the first time in the car. Really good. Strong you know, day. tomorrow the times are going to get quicker and quicker, and quicker I'm sure. Uh, you know, the thing is, you see Emma Gilmore in Extreme E, and you think, wow, she's getting a lot of seat time. Actually, she's not. You know, those races are sort of three in or and four out minutes, the car. and the car yeah. is so different. And it's yeah. a race. Yeah. You know, yeah, so yeah, you yeah. can't really, it's not in any way similar to what she's doing here. So, no, she's done a great job. She's under a lot of pressure. Yes. Jack Who's Hawkswood. Jack Hawkswood. 4.7 or something behind. Hawkswood Ridge. Hawks Ridge. What was it called? Jack's Ridge. Jack's Ridge. He was the man. Jack's Ridge. Thank yeah. you, Paul. Yeah. Jack's Ridge on Rally New Zealand. That's in his back garden, basically, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. That'll be a great one to watch tomorrow. Tomorrow, yeah. No, totally. No. Fine. You are a lot of the folks that have come out here tonight. And the fans were great, as you said, David. There were so many. A lot of them come out to see the legendary Rosendale Escort. And in that car this year is one of the world's very, very best drivers. Miko Harvinen. Let's see what he thought of his first day here on the Otago Rally. Yeah, the car is working perfectly. It's really nice. Nice to drive. Kind of a feels a little bit like, I don't know what it's been like maybe at the 80s when they've been with that car, like Fadan and, and, and all those guys doing Rally New Zealand. So it's been a fantastic for sure. Tell me about the stages then this morning. It was a little damp first thing. Did, how, did that make it a little bit, little bit twitchy, a little bit difficult out there? No, actually, like uh, here as well, when it rains a little bit, it just softens the surface just a bit and makes the grip even better than uh, if there's lots of loose gravel on top of hard surface. So it only helped. And, uh, and then for the second pass, you know, all the loose was already gone. It was quite nice, clean line. So perfect morning. <laughs> for sure. My goodness me, he's enjoyed himself out there. Uh, how could you fail to? Though, I mean, interesting that Miko said there, you know, he's not, he's not making notes in a minute, is he? You know, it's... it's Oh, what, 11 years since he was in New Zealand competing last. Making notes on these stages is really difficult. Yeah. They are so technical. Yeah. Tomorrow, the Curry Bush stage is probably the most technical with so many corners on the top of crests and you're just not sure. But remember the one and Dancy's pass up and over the top where you come over the crest and the, the, the road goes round to the left to the right, but the road actually the visually vision, takes you straight off. I mean, you've got to have, and there are probably yeah. 10 of those, Oof. that you've got to have them bang on. You only get one wrong. 
and you're That's out. That's it, you're out. Oh, no, no, there's no coming back if he went <laughs> off on that corner. <laughs> he's, uh, no, he's done a great job. It is a fantastic car. He's mindful as well yeah. of the yeah. value of that car, the heritage of that car, but he's doing a great job. Yeah, absolutely not put a mark on it all day. Folks, it has been a wonderful day one here at the Otago Rally. How blessed are we with this weather? You know, it started off this morning, and it was, what time did we leave? Too early. Oh, fine. Or oh, some, some ungodly uh, hour this morning, it and it was raining, yeah, really miserable. surprised. It was cold, it was chilly. We didn't know what the day was going to bring. Well, it's brought us some of the very best rallying. It's brought us this glorious weather here in Dunedin. It's, it's gonna absolutely pour down. No, it's not. <laughs> Sun's coming out tomorrow. One more day to go, folks. Seven stages on the final day. It's a longer day, one stage less, a longer day. 137 kilometers of the most magnificent stages for you tomorrow, folks. We'll see you then.